the climate crisis is worsening at the presidented rate. Please, could you speak about the roles of conscious activism from a relative and non-dual perspective? What are your thoughts on collective responsibility? Many thanks for your beautiful teaching so freely. Yeah, pleasure, Amy. Yeah, maybe we as humans kill ourselves <laughs> and wipe ourselves out. Um, I don't know about collective responsibility. Um, I suspect that most people don't care enough, to be honest with you, Amy. Like, um, that's the difficulty in change like say if you take coronavirus at the moment i'm just going to blatantly speak about it i've already done it if you take coronavirus everyone's just interested in the easy way out everyone's just shoving vaccines into teenagers because they think that will work they think that that's the best way out but that's the easiest and the quickest way out of it so i don't think that Society has this capability to look at climate crisis res responsibility, responsibly, and I don't know if that will change. I'm not even sure it would change. It, what would change with, like, if everyone woke up, is that their seeking would reduce, so consumerism would reduce. And people might not feel the need to have so many children. You know, part of it is having children. Like, um, they're overpopulated. And that's a big part of it. And, you know, how many people are not going to have children because of climate change? Or reduce the amount of children because of climate change? Especially in third world nations where they feel very insecure. So the more insecure you feel, the more children you tend to have. I don't know if that's true, but that's my projection onto the situation. Um, I don't know humans have the capability to change in that way, to be honest with you. So like in my group of friends that are very open-minded, like all of them just want to get everybody vaccinated just so society can open up again. And I really get that. Like, they've got kids, and they're really fed up with the kids getting sent home. But I don't know, in the long run, if that's the best solution for society. I think that this is, a, this is like a consumerism attitude towards the virus. I'm not criticising anyone that's taken the vaccine. It's all your choice and your... Um, like, how you feel. And that's, like, totally valid if you've taken it. But I feel like as a collective, as a society, like just stuffing vaccines into everyone isn't like the responsible, especially like eco ecologically responsible way forward. Because that vaccine is going to go back into nature as soon as we pee. So it's going to fuck up. If it doesn't fuck up the human body. Oh my God, I swear. I've done everything in this video. So um, it's going to fuck up nature. Like, what's that when you pee it out? Like, how's that going to affect nature? 
Like, and we're doing it on a mass scale. We've got 80 billion people that are taking it, which would have to continuously take it for years to come in order to deal with the coronavirus. And they're constantly peeing it out into the environment. So, and then just like ask yourself, like how many people listening, how many people would be prepared to, um, to not take the vaccine? in order to find a more economical and sustainable way of dealing with the vaccine, with the coronavirus. I don't think many people would be prepared to do that. Especially now with, like in France, like, I, like if you're not vaccinated, you can't from the 1st of August go into most public services. Unless you take a PCR test or a um, and that's just France, I don't know about other, uh, England I think is getting a similar way. So yeah, it's like a whole mentality that we have to change. Like just, like, like a whole mentality that we, we have to change in order to be more in line with nature. I'm not inherently against vaccine, that's what I'm not, what I'm saying. Because I can understand and I can perceive like how vaccines helped us, but it's also helped us to overpopulate the planet. So with us having that ability to not succumb to illnesses, we've then grown in, in, in population. And that wasn't our consideration. We didn't care. We were just like, nope, that's fine. Let's keep on populating, keep on having babies. And we didn't care that through these vaccines, which should be sacred if we do something like that, if we choose to do something, it should be so sacred. Um, we then just like got older, so we lived for double amount of the time and we um, had loads of babies and then we've now at like 8 billion people. So at least before we had the vaccines, like nature was naturally cutting our population. So because if any population overpopulates this planet, there's gonna be great disbalance. But how many people, like listening, like for yourself, how many of you are willing not to have kids and not to vaccinate and to find a way out of this, this coronavirus in a more holistic way that will be slower, that might cost more money, that might mean that you have to isolate more or distance more from humanity, or it might mean that more people die that you know. I don't think even people in spirituality would be saying yes right now. And that's not a blame. Like that's, like we're all, it's all, it's all, we're all one as this society. We're like an ant's nest. So it's not blaming anyone. It's not like, oh, if I don't take it, I'm better. If they do take it, it's better then. Because they can also see the advantages of taking a vaccine. So then, what do we do? It might be that technology saves us, saves us if anything is gonna save us. It might be that technology destroys us, but if anything's gonna save us, then maybe it's technology. And maybe technology figures out a way how to balance this planet where it's like, the scales are really like this, like there's too many humans and the humans that are here, so there's too many of us, number one. And then number two, we're too, we consume too much. And we do crazy things like packaging our food in plastic. And um, growing our crops with pesticides and eating way too much meat. Like firstly, I'm not talking about the cruelty of the meat industry, but secondly, if like if we, we have like, I think something like 2 billion or 3 billion cows on the planet that, that we're growing and they're in the cycle of the, um, the meat industry. So you can understand that not only do we have the 8 billion humans, I think it's like 2 billion cows or maybe it's like 2 billion animals that we have 
in the process of the, the meat industry. So that are being grown and they're being slaughtered like at a rapid rate. So that's two billion, but they're being slaughtered continuously. Like so many are being killed in every moment. Um, but so say if we have a billion cows, we can, I can look it up actually quickly what the statistics are. How many cows are currently Yeah, I can't tell how many millions that is. Additional information. Um, yeah, sorry. Be okay. So say if there's one billion animals in the meat industry now, like, and we've got 8 billion humans, then you've got to grow all the grain for those animals. So that is like a huge amount of resources. So not only do we have to grow our vegetables and our grain for ourselves, we then have to grow extra grain to give to the cows so they can get nice and fat, so then we can kill them. But how many people like listening now how many people are prepared to give that up? To only eat meat once a week, a max, or twice a week, a max. Like any animal products are max twice a week. Most people need it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They don't know how to eat without it. So, like, our consumption is so big, and the animals that we're consuming is so big. So I don't think that any amount of protesting, any amount of um, talks on the internet or talks about this will fix it. I think that our only possibility is through technology and technology finding a way from an unbiased point of view. So it has all the information and, um, and can you know, decide how nature can be balanced as well as us. Yeah, so that's my perspective on it. I don't think that anything we really do is going to change it because most people are more interested in just survival, which is fair enough because there's some people in societies where their survival is so difficult and there's only 5% of us that aren't in difficult survival situations and we still don't do very much either. I think it's too hard for us to think about it. It's not that we're bad. It's just that it's too hard for us to think about in moment to moment. Thanks, Amy, for your question. So, Nick, how did you find those statistics so quickly? One billion cows per year. Uh, not per year, but currently in the meat industry, 1 billion sheep, 25 billion chickens. Can you imagine how much grain and feed that is? Like, have you ever fed just one chicken? Like, that's insane. That's insane. I mean, that's a huge part of our... Um, but, it do, but the meat industry have very, hide this because you, like... They, you don't really think that a lot of our farming is about feeding the cows, the, the sheep and the chickens. So, so they, you know, they put something like 5% of our emissions is down to, to livestock, but that doesn't include all the grain that's being grown separately to feed them. Yeah. And then all the pesticides that are being used on top of that. Yeah, cattle are cut for 15% of global warming emissions, but are they including the grain which is grown for the cattle? They're, that's what the, they're talking about, the farts of the cows, when they say 15%, and the land in which the, the cows 
grow off. Like, are on. But I don't, and the poo that they're producing, but I don't think they're talking about the grain in which is being produced for that. Because meat industries are massive. Um, what's that word called? Like, for policies that are made by the government, their lobbies, like they pay, they pay huge amount of monies, money to... Um, to uh, get the government to be pro-meat industries and to hide statistics of how, like, so the statistics aren't obvious of how the meat industry works. Um, and I think even in America, it is illegal to say something bad about the meat industry. Like, so there's a policy passed in America where you're not allowed to legally speak out about the meat industry but that's really complex and I don't really understand it so I'm kind of like spurting this stuff out and it's like it could it could be not quite right but it's something along those lines the meat industry is so powerful in our society like don't believe the statistics that you read about it they are, they are heavily manipulated but just imagine it like imagine all the people that you know that eat meat and then just imagine 8 billion people consuming that amount of meat. <laughs>